Hi Stampin' Friends. Thanks for joining me in my Stampin' Peace studio. I've got a fun project planned for you today. I'm going to show you how to make what I call the tiny treat bag. And with this project, I am featuring the Naturally Eclectic Designer Series paper, which is full of beautiful patterns and colors. And I'm going to pair that Designer Series paper with Peekaboo Peach cardstock. Here is a reminder that the 2016 through 2018 in colors will be retiring very soon. Stampin' Up! is announcing its 2018 retirement list on Monday, April 9th. I'm going to caution you that the in, outgoing in-color products typically sell out very, very quickly. So if you know now that you want some of those, I suggest that you order them now and not wait until the retiring list comes out. The retiring 2016 to 2018 in colors includes Dapper Denim, Emerald Envy, Flirty Flamingo, Peekaboo Peach, and Sweet Sugar Plum. So you'll be sure, you'll want to be sure to take an inventory of any cardstock or perhaps ink refills. Those typically go first day. Um, so take an inventory of your in-color products and see if there's anything that you need or want to replenish before they hit the retirement list. I'll also tell you, and of course, I never know um, ahead of time, and we have not been told um, what's on that list, and we don't know or have not been told, demonstrators have not been told either, if um, if any of the projects are dis uh, products are discounted and what products are if so in the past if history repeats itself the in color products are not discounted another reason why you want to get them now before they hit that list and are sold out consumable products are available while supplies last only. So please do not delay. Okay, let's get started with that project. Okay, I am ready to show you how to make these very cute tiny treat bags. Okay, and again, I'm featuring the Naturally Eclectic Designer Series paper, along with Peekaboo Peach cardstock. Okay, now to start, what you will need is a half sheet of cardstock. This measures five and a half inches by eight and a half inches. Therefore, you can make two of these bags from one sheet of cardstock. In addition, you're also going to need one piece of designer series paper that is one and a half inches by nine inches long, okay? And then I have some embellishing elements that I already have prepared. Now basically, what you see here is a template that I've made up to show you how to make that tiny treat bag. So you can um, save the photo, you know, whatever. It's on my blog. So I am simply going to follow along with this. Okay, I've already cut my cardstock five and a half inches by eight and a half inches. Okay, I am going to make two vertical score lines. The first at one and a half inches, and the second one is at four inches. Okay, now I'm going to turn this. And I always like to turn my template at the same time to help me keep better track of um, what lines I'm scoring on. So I'm gonna start by scoring at one and three quarters inches. Then I'm gonna score at three and a half inches. Five inches. 
and six and three quarter inches. Okay. Now at this point, I'm going to do some cutting, okay? I want to cut these, all these corner flaps, okay? So I'm going to use my scissor snips and cut right along those score lines I just made, okay? And we are not cutting those corners off. We're just making these four slits to identify those tabs, okay? Now I'm gonna turn my template this way. It's just easier for me to work and follow along. So now I'm gonna cut out these triangles. So I'm in the second section from the right, and I'm gonna start at the lower right-hand corner and go to the upper left-hand corner of that section. And then, I have that, see how that matches up? I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, but in the opposite direction. Starting on the lower left corner and going to the upper right. And then of course, doing the other side so I can cut that triangle out. I'm gonna flip it around, do the very same thing. So both sides should look symmetrical. Okay, so that's what I have so far, okay? The next thing I wanna do, I'm gonna move my Simply Score tool out of the way. The next thing I wanna show you is rounding these corners. Um, and to do that, I'm pulling out my envelope punch board. One of the great fe features of this on envelope punch board is not only can you make fancy designer custom envelopes with it, but it also has a corner rounder, okay? So I'm gonna move these tabs out of the way. I'm just gonna fold them back, and I'm gonna stick this corner into that notch, and then I'm gonna press down, and I've got a nice corner there. Again, another nicely rounded corner. I'm gonna do the same thing over here for another nicely rounded corner, and then the fourth one, okay? So, fun little trick. Um, I actually use that envelope punch board a lot more than I thought I would, just simply because of that feature, okay? Now I'm gonna pull out my half inch circle punch. I'm gonna kind of just gather these two flaps that I rounded the corners on, okay? And I'm gonna punch these together because I want the whole the, uh, circles to line up, okay? Oh, about there looks good. Okay, so this is what I have, okay? So right now, it's looking identical as far as the score lines the cutting lines and the punched parts, okay? I want to, I'm gonna set that template aside. Whenever you have the opportunity to um, save a template or you come across a template, um, I, th I just think it's a great idea to make one up, save it, and then each time you wanna make that project, it's ready. And it just makes things go so much more quickly. Um, you don't have to be going back and forth through a video and stopping and starting. Um, so please take advantage of the template I've made for you. Okay. You can also um, make this in designer series paper. If you go back to one of my blog posts of December 2016, I made this um, with club members in a Christmas pattern, and we put a Christmas greeting on and filled it with treats, so it was a lot of fun. Okay, so now 
it tells me, my template tells me to put tape on the back of these four corners, okay? So I'm gonna do that right now. And for this project, I prefer uh, Fast Fuse. Whoops, I just opened this one up. So let me see if I can get it started. No. There we go. So um, I'm using Fast Fuse, but I'm just going to tell you that if you don't have Fast Fuse, you want a good strong adhesive. Okay. Anytime I'm making 3D projects, I do prefer to use a stronger adhesive than Snail. Okay. So now I'm going to be putting this together. I have this little flap in the metal. I'm going to pull up one side. And I'm going to fold that down. And I want you to notice here, oops, sorry. I want you to notice here that this flap that you're folding to the inside is going all the way down to the bottom. You will have a little gap here between that small flap and the larger one that you're folding over. But no worries, um, it doesn't even show. Then you're going to pull up the other side, the right flap, and do the same thing. Just push that in. You can feel it touching the bottom of the inside of the bag. Okay, and there's your side. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, like this. Okay, and this is what you have. Okay. Pretty easy. It looks complicated, but honestly, you do one or two, and you are on your way to making multiples of these for a party or classroom treats, whatever um, you have the need for. Great for bridal showers, coworker gifts, all kinds of things. Okay, so now I'm going to wrap the outside of this bag with that strip of designer series paper. Now I want to show you a trick. I like to hide all seams. The reason? It looks more professional. It looks um, more finished, has a cleaner finish to it. Okay, so I just put a teeny bit of adhesive right here, but I start at the edge. Okay, I'm not going to secure that down really hard though. I'm going to come around with this strip and then I'm going to lift this up, if I can get my finger in there, lift this up, fold the small flap down, and then match up that large one along the back. Do you see how I did that? And now if you look at the box, you, nobody sees that seam. You don't see it, I don't see it, it's well hidden there, okay? And then just as another um, tip, I tend to put that kind of thing in the back. So this will be my front now, okay? At this point, I'm going to tie a ribbon at the top. I'm gonna to tie it into a bow. I'm gonna go through both of these. I cut off a piece of ribbon about 16 inches, which is probably a little bit long for this project, but um, I would rather be a little bit long than a little bit short. When, you're, when you cut your ribbon too short, it can be very frustrating. Um, and then you actually end up wasting more because you're gonna get frustrated and um, want to cut another piece, okay? So now I'm gonna make my loops for the bow. Okay. Oh, I forgot one thing. I'm gonna go back. I'll loosen this up. Before I tie that tight, I want to stick this piece of mini sequin trim, gold mini sequin trim, up there. So it's going to get caught in the bow and just adds an extra um, bit of embellishment to your finished project. Okay, now I can tie my bow. Don't get frustrated with tying bows either. Just take your time. 
Um, another, <clears throat> excuse me, another good reason to have plenty of ribbon cut is so that you have room to play with these loops and tails, okay, or the loops and the ends. Sometimes people in my class, I think, when they see the bow on my sample card that they're going to be making, sometimes I think they think that every bow I make turns out perfectly the first time I do it. The reason it looks perfect is I take time to play with the loops and bows. I can make the bows look larger or smaller by doing that, okay? So just work with them a little bit and know that um, it's common practice to um, play with those loops and ends, okay? I'm gonna use my snips here to cut the ends of the ribbon. I don't want these quite so long. Okay, so I have that. Now you'll see over here, I have some flowers and leaves cut out. I cut these out directly from a sheet of the designer series paper from the Naturally Eclectic pack, okay? The nice thing about cutting these, and I really don't mind fussy cutting, I do it quickly. I don't fuss, I don't get worked up with it. I just, just go for it. Um, and the nice thing about cutting these is all the shapes are kind of abstract. So that makes cutting them out even easier and you can do it very, very quickly. Now what I'm going to do is, I don't know why I cut out four, I think I'll go with three. Um, I've often heard when you're embellishing or arranging flowers, that sort of thing, you work in odd numbers, okay? So that's why I chose three. Now I'm gonna put a couple of these on with glue dots. The first one I think I'll do the glue dots right about, oh, probably here. I'm gonna put the second one on and I'm gonna tell you something. I am going to be using dimensionals, but if you don't have dimensionals or if you want a layer that's off the paper, but not quite high, as high as your dimensionals, you can double up on the glue dots. You can layer them, kind of stack them, okay? So I'm gonna put another one right here. And then my last flower, I am going to use dimensionals. These are the minis. Have you tried the mini dimensionals? I really do like them. Great for those tiny pieces or things where we don't really need the whole big one, whole big dimensional. And I'm gonna pop that up there. And then I've cut out some leaves and what I'm gonna do with these is just kinda tuck them in and adhere them with glue dots, okay? Another good reason um, when we layer is so that we can do things like this, where we tuck the leaves in, okay? And again, my fussy cutting was so, so simple. We call it fussy cutting, but honestly, on these flower images and leaf images, um, it really was not fussy, it was quite easy. Okay, so I'm gonna put some more here. Like that. And I've got some of these little ones yet. We can even go up here on the top. Okay. And notice I didn't tack them down all the way. I think that also gives them, um, gives your finished project a little more dimension as well. And let's see, I've got these. Maybe I just don't need those, so I'll set those aside. So there it is, my finished tiny treat bag and ready to fill with some little goo goodies. Um, for a coworker, you might put in something like paper clips um, or little the tiny mini binder clips, candy, everybody loves treats and sweets. Um, great for birthday parties, showers, classroom treats, that sort of thing. So I hope you'll give this a try. I hope you enjoy making these as much as I do. Remember to copy that template for yourself so it's always handy so you're ready to make these whenever 
the, t the occasion arises. If you like this video and other videos and blog posts, please share it with your friends and leave a positive comment as well. And if you would like to purchase these or any other Stampin' Up! products, you can do that at my website, www.marynabe.stampinup.net. When placing an online order at my website, I ask that you use my monthly host code, which I have right here for the month of April. Doing this allows me to accumulate some Stampin' Rewards, and these are things I use as prizes and giveaways throughout the year for various challenges or ordering incentives or customer or team gifts. So I greatly appreciate that um, when you are able to use the monthly host code. And if you enjoy this video and other videos of mine, as well as my blog post, I would appreciate it if you would share the information with your friends. I want to build my business and grow it and continue learning in an effort to better serve you and many other people. So I appreciate your help with that. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.